Welcome to Tiger Bridge. In this video, we will show you how to use Bridge to archive data to the cloud. Recent studies show that more than half of an organization's data is infrequently accessed. You can make an analysis of your data and see the numbers yourself. If you let the cloud take care of that data, you won't have big initial investments. It will be easy to manage your backups, and you will meet all compliancy requirements while reducing your costs. Tiger Bridge helps you achieve all of that and gives you even more. You can take advantage of the archiving functionality and have, on top of that, an easy method for file server extension and disaster recovery, cloud migration capabilities, backup creation, remote collaboration with multi-site synchronization, and data protection. The first method for archiving with Bridge is through archive policies, which allow you to automatically move data between the different cloud tiers based on the size and frequency of access. For the purposes of our demo, we have set up a local source, this data directory, and we've configured a target on the cloud with all the needed details, the default access tier, and high rehydration priority. A key functionality of Tiger Bridge is that it can enable a two- or three-tier flow where frequently used data is kept locally, while cold and archive data is intelligently assigned to Azure Cool and Archive tiers, respectively. As per Microsoft, at the time of the creation of the video with a standard priority, the rehydration request will be processed in the order it was received, and may take up to 15 hours. With high priority, the request will be prioritized over standard requests and may finish in under one hour for objects under 10 gigabytes in size. The high priority requests are associated with increased costs. On top of all that, we have a short, almost real-time replication policy to make sure all changes we make locally are replicated to the cloud and Tiger Bridge is currently running. Within that folder, we have a bunch of files and they are all replicated. We can see them in the cloud portal as well. Let's now create our archive policy for this source. We will first try it out with files not accessed for more than 50 days and bigger than the default 10 megabytes. This video file is bigger and has not been modified for more than 50 days. However, after applying the policy and refreshing the bridge interface, we can see that nothing's yet been archived. If we go to the cloud portal, this video file is still in the hot access tier. The reason is that bridge looks at the last accessed, not modified time, and this file has been accessed within these last 50 days. It might have been copied or just opened and closed, for example, but it still falls outside the archive policy. If we now go and change that policy to something really short, like files not accessed for more than five minutes, and apply this policy, we can see, after refreshing, that the file has been archived. It shows as such in the bridge statistics, and if we refresh the cloud portal, the new access tier shows there as well. With archive policies, we get the desired storage optimization, but there is still no way to be sure that all files in a specific directory will be archived. The second method that Bridge provides for archiving is the manual job. If we right-click this file, go to the Tiger Bridge menu, select Move to Archive, and accept the warning. The file will also be archived and we can see that in the bridge statistics and in the cloud portal. This method enables you to have more control over your data management. However, it involves more hassle and is time consuming for admins. Our third method for archiving is by setting the archive tier as a direct target. This way, all the replicated data goes directly to the cloud archive. For the demo, we will set another source to replicate the data in this data2 directory to a second archive container. This time, however, we will set the default access tier to be archive.
Once we resume the work of TigerBridge, we can see that the data in this folder is replicated and all its files are in the archive tier. An obvious benefit is that using the archive tier as a direct target saves money as the data goes straight to the cheapest tier without having to be stored in the cool or hot tiers first. This could be ideal for industries with very high compliance requirements like surveillance. In many cases, you may also want or must have a second copy of your data as a backup, and this copy has to be off-site. This way, you ensure you are ready for disaster recovery. In these cases, you do not need to access the data from the cloud unless there is a disaster. Using the cheapest possible storage, i.e. the archive tier, would be useful in that scenario as well. That being said, the data is not immediately available and retrieval is costly and delayed. Once you have set up your archiving policies, you may not want to keep the files locally anymore. These are infrequently accessed files and there is no need for them to occupy space on the local storage. You could set up a reclaim policy so that the space gets reclaimed automatically or, like in this demo, you can manually reclaim the space needed for these files. All the files that are in the archive tier become inaccessible, noted by the special crossed icon. No files could be opened directly from the archive tier. They need to be retrieved first. If we would like to get any file in this directory back from the archive, we could right-click it, go to the Tiger Bridge menu, and select Rehydrate from Archive. A confirmation message shows up because taking information from the archive is the most cost-sensitive operation in this scenario. Once we confirm, the request is sent to the cloud. At this time, you would have to wait, as this is time-consuming. We had to wait for about 15 minutes for the file to come back. If needed, you can change the access tier from the cloud portal as well by using the Change Tier menu and selecting the tier you would like to move the file to. Once the file is rehydrated, you will be able to open it successfully. By default, double-clicking any of the other files won't initiate retrieval, as this is a costly operation. If you don't want to manually retrieve each file each time it's needed, there is a setting in the registry that can change the behavior. After changing that, double-clicking a file will automatically retrieve it from the archive. There are also some applications that are created to work with archive files and can handle the wait and open the file for you automatically when it gets retrieved, so you don't have to wait and refresh. In summary, TigerBridge offers three methods that allow us to archive data to the cloud, with archive policies, manually, and as a direct target. Meet your storage management requirements by selecting the right plan for you. This concludes the video. Thank you for viewing.